have an opportunity to talk about your uh, Wall Street Journal article and feedback later on. But we're going to have, as Corey asked me about this a few weeks ago, we'll have normal discussion after our main presenter. Okay. Uh, and our main presenter is Suzanne Moore. So let's, let's give Suzanne a hand for being here today. Okay, now, you remember uh, a week or so ago we had introduction to the Ponzi scheme song, the world premiere here, and uh, former uh, County Councilman David James just had a request. David, what was that request? What's the name of that song you sang last week? I thought that was better than the Ponzi song. That was a Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah, Mountain Dew, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. Mr. Gaddix, who's the author of Mountain Dew, his, his, his story, and, and now Mr. Gaddix, there's Duke Henry, so don't just ignore him, don't, don't worry about that. I know you, that's one of your heroes, but... Uh, so, what I'd like you to do is sing your song, and, and do, do, the, uh, do the Ponzi scheme song, and then, if you will, introduce uh, Suzanne, and then she'll do about a 10-minute presentation. Or less. Or less. And we'll take Q&A, and then we'll go back to our normal interaction and discussion. We have plenty to discuss, especially with this ordinance that we just introduced at the county level. And Bill Black, uh, Bill, you've got five minutes if you want to speak. You want five minutes? It's going to what time? Okay, it's hard to follow until we can leave it out. Yeah, just to get you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm 74 years old and I draw Social Security. And nobody's paying my Social Security, y'all. Young people say, well, we're paying for your social money. No, ain't. I paid for it. Now what, the money? now, what the government did with my money, I don't know. But Mr. Braven said that Charlie Ponzi told them how to steal it, and they stole it. So, uh, Steve said, write them a song, and, and, uh, and let's, uh, let's do a song on it. So, I'm sitting there and stroke out the song right in there. It says, uh, after World War One, things were really bad. Poor people lost everything they had. They didn't have no food, no job, no car. Up on the scene came FDR. Now I don't know, but it does seem his plan for the people was a Ponzi scheme. Lord Charlie Ponzi, what have you done? You showed the politicians how to work your tricks. They took all the money and now we're in fix. Well, he promised everybody an awful lot. A good job and a chicken in every pot. The big said, man, that sounds so good. Said they vote for him if he thought he could. FDR said, I can get it done. I got social security for everyone. Lord John Ponzi, what have you done? He got all excited, he was on the road, going to take, take care of everybody when they got old. How's he going to do it with it? He said, he said, what the heck? Let us take a little money out of everybody's check. Put it in the bank. I'm impressed for you. And you have a nice thing when you're 60. What have you done? Joke the politicians how to work your tricks. Now cut all that money out of your hands. Lord Charlie Ponzi, what have you done? Thank you, Mr. Gordon.
I thought, oh, yay, I'm, I'm going to start. I'm going to get to know a lot about Lexington. I'm going to get involved in uh, local politics. I'm going to be helping the people of Lexington. And they said, but Suzanne, we have a problem. We can't offer you this job because you're perfect for it in every way, but you look like Roxanne. <laughs> and I, I looked at him so funny, and I just stood back and I said, I do not know what kind of discrimination this is, but I'm certain my attorney will be able to figure it out. Well, of course, they're still talking about that in downtown Lexington. My attorney is still figuring out a number of things, and I'm blessed to be here today to tell you that I am ready and prepared to serve Lexington once again, as I have in the past. I've taught school in Lexington. I have also served in the clerk of court's office for five years, handling all types of issues that have come through the court. I am running for public court because I want the court to be better than it is. Anytime you have someone that runs an office that thinks that they can't improve things, it's time for a change. And Lexington deserves more than what we have now. I was the executive assistant to the current clerk for four years. I worked in family court and helped women and gentlemen who were seeking child support. I worked closely with the judges. I worked closely with attorneys. So I, I, I come knowing a lot about what goes on in the courthouse, and I know what does not take place in the courthouse that should be taking place in the courthouse. Uh, a lot has been said about um, the clerk, and I'm not here to besmirch her or to say anything um, terrible about her. I'm here to tell you the truth. Now, you mentioned, Steve, earlier that there was an article in the beloved Mr. West paper this past week about um, the other Mrs. Moore writing back about my taking attendance for the clerk. Well, I'm here to tell you that she did tell me to take attendance. I don't care how eloquent she is in her writing, that I did take attendance <coughs> for the clerk because she asked me to. That was my job to take attendance for all employees. So I did do that, and the current clerk missed 109 days in 2009. Now, if you figure that up, the average person works 20 days a month and you divide 20 into 109, that's over five and a half months of work. She was not there for five and a half months. Now, some of you are retired, some of you may still work, but I'm telling you, if I was teaching school and I missed five and a half months of teaching, they would come to me and say, I'm sorry, we have to ask you to leave, we're gonna to have to hire a full-time teacher. If you missed five and a half works from your small uh, weeks, <coughs> excuse me, from your small business, let me tell you, that till is not going to be open and closed. The current clerk has been there. She has instituted some plans. To be perfectly honest, some of those plans were already in effect before she came on. She just picked up the ball and ran with it. Yay! I'm delighted to tell you that she did a wonderful job doing what was already in, in motion. She does show up occasionally. She's there representing you, but she's not there at 8 o'clock in the morning. She's not there at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And she's not there numerous days when people need to see her. But she has Ms. Moore to do her bidding for her. <coughs> and I am... Man. Yeah. Nikki Karras. Welcome. Professional photographer, play Santa Claus Christmas. The, the no kidding. Nikki, good to see you. You can't imagine that? <laughs> because I feel like Lexington deserves to have someone that will be at work every day. I'm running because I feel like the, the folks that go to the courthouse need a courthouse that is warm and welcoming. I feel like they need someone that is willing to go beyond what has been done so far to assist them. I want to be that clerk of court who knows how to help people, who doesn't push their problems off on someone else. I want to be there to serve the people of Lexington. I may look like Roxanne Wilson. I may be related to other people in politics, but I am my own person. And I know what I bring to the table is truth and honesty. This article that you mentioned somewhat attacked my integrity and my character. Uh, I laughed at first, and then I suddenly got very serious. My character and my honesty and my Christian Womanhood has never been attacked like this before. I do not lie, I do not cheat, and I 
generally don't associate with those that do. <coughs> I was a Girl Scout leader for four years. I was a Girl Scout for 12 years and a den mother for six years. I know what truth and honor is. I know what integrity is. I am the personification of those values. And I hope when you go to vote on June the 12th that you will remember Susan and Moore and will consider voting for me because I believe that I can bring a fresh face and a fresh, honest look to the courthouse. Thank you once again for having me today. Don't applaud yet because I have one other thing to say. My friend Kristen Hook has come with me today. We, we have been working together to get the message out to all of Lexington that there needs to be a change. And I hope you will agree with me that there needs to be a change. Thank you very much for your kindness. And that was a very hard act to follow. Susan, you have, sure. you take a couple minutes oh, questions. Any, any questions? Ron, you got any questions? Or Ron, Ron does a good job on video coaching. Not, not just here, but a lot of Patriot events. He was at the county council last night about that. Republican issue we were sure. talking about, the ordinance. If I could just say just one or two, it's just as a... I've known Suzanne for about 11 years. We have talked over the years over most any issue that you could think of, politically, socially. There is no doubt in my mind. I know what kind of person she is. I know she has the most high character and integrity. She is an example for others to follow in that regard. She has raised her children that way. We've talked about every issue. There's no doubt in my mind. She doesn't lie. It's not part of her persona. She doesn't know how to do anything except stand up for what's right and the truth. And I know for a, with, in my being that she exhibits servant leadership. And frankly, in an, in an environment that we're in, with, with people hurting the way we are in this county and in this state and in this country, we need more people that are willing and have the courage to stand up and offer themselves up in perhaps a uh, contentious kind of situation but nevertheless offer themselves to do the right thing and to want to set an example and model an honest day's pay for an honest day's work. And I know she'll improve the quality around the courthouse because I've witnessed personally when my child was little in terms of what she did and she was hired at a particular school because she was so wonderful in terms of connecting with people, etc. When people go to the courthouse, my father was solicitor back in the 70s and I can tell you I grew up going over there and when I was growing up, I would go and sit in the courthouse, and the clerk was always there. The, always there. <coughs> so. Well, that's a very nice talk, Kristen. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Gannis said he had a question. Suzanne, yes, what what does the clerk of court do? Uh, we, we've, we've had the different uh, county people here talk to do it. We had the people who keeps the records, mm -hmm. and then you're the run for the clerk of court. What is the difference between the, keeping the records and the clerk of court's job? Well, thank you for asking that, and I probably should start every little presentation with that information because that, that gets asked. Yeah, people get confused. Often. People don't know what the clerk of court does. That's right. If any of you have ever had a servant in your home that cleaned up, that straightened up, that's exactly what the clerk of court does. The clerk of court is the custodian for the courthouse. They oversee everything that goes on in the courthouse. They oversee the records that are filed there. They oversee the cases that are seen there, civil court, criminal court, or general sessions court, and most particularly family court, where we deal with child support. And to be perfectly honest, family court is the biggest and largest area that we have to deal with. Um, getting child support ruling people in that haven't paid their child support, making certain that it's done in a timely manner, making sure that when women co are coming to the courthouse crying because they haven't fed their children. I have gotten snacks out of my desk drawer to feed children who haven't had food in three days. I have helped women who have come there who have been burned over at 90% of their body and they have four kids and they have no, no one to um, help them. I went around the courthouse one day and collected money because I felt such a love of this lady who was a civil engineer, but her husband left her because she was in a gasoline department. Um, the clerk of court is there to serve the people, and she should be there full time. Now, there are, is a staff of 36 people that help people get through the various processes for the three areas. 36 people make a huge difference. 
but 37 would make even a bigger difference. And having her be there, having me be there, would be one more person to help the citizens of Lexington. The salary, I don't know whether any of you know, the salary for the clerk of court is $71,000. <coughs> and then there's another uh, few dollars that are thrown in from the state, and I think it's around $8,000. So we're talking approximately $80,000, and that's before benefits, that's before computers, free cell phones. I, I imagine the package is well over $100,000 to be clerk of court. It's, it's a, a, a sizable chunk of your tax dollars, and your tax dollars should be spent on someone that is going to be at court, someone that is not going to travel to Jamaica or Mexico or a beach retreat. But in defense and, of that, let me say this, that, that salary, I'm an accountant by the way, that salary is based upon what that person could make in a light job on the outside. They didn't just you know, just decide, hey, we're going to give this lady eighty thousand dollars to do this job. job. What is it's, a job on the outside that's similar to clerk of court? Uh, to to uh, uh, take care of thirty six uh, different employees and and uh, uh, she, she, their attendance, she yes. can probably tell you better than I can, but it, it it's based on. Uh, there's no job what the, that requires that specific skill set in a private sector. It's just well, I'm glad to have him back arguing with me. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll have to look into it. I haven't uh, dug into it, but I'm not anymore. Yeah, one way to set salary for the chief is like that. Chair is the ratio of what not. Yes, they want to have a dollar more of the chief by the quality of the issues. So it was a contest of who could pay the most in the past issues. But apparently, since we have five applicants for the job, we, we probably could cut the salary in half. <laughs> yeah, sounds like the supply. The supplies exceeding. I'm sorry. Do you have a news source that I don't know? Who are the other five applicants? We don't have five applicants. Yeah. Well, isn't it five? Or is it four? I don't know. You're thinking of House Seat 39. Yeah. Okay. Score for your job. I don't think there's a three yet. Sure. But I do, I do know that well, are the other agencies person? answerable to the clerk of court, like the registrar's office, is they, are, is, are they answerable to the clerk of court or They're, to the county? Answerable is the wrong wrong question. That well, they, are, they are under the umbrella of the county. Yeah, but the they're register not of deeds actually functions actually under, the under county, your office. Under the county administrator, not the clerk of court. Yeah. Are what any of the agencies uh, under that? Eddie McCain. Eddie McCain. Yeah. What, what role does a clerk of court play, if any, when setting court dates for people? In setting the court dates, the clerk of court really has very little to do. They manage the court dates once they are once they are set by the circuit court. The resident circuit court judge sets the dates. And we have an organization in downtown Columbia that is under the Chief Justice, Gene told us, called Court Administration. And they actually set the dates that the court will be in session so that they can send their judges out to the various courthouses. The, the, the reason why I'm asking that question is that I know there are quite a few people in the Lexington County Jail that have been there for two, three, even four years waiting on a court date. Absolutely. Donnie Mars has been there. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 that's, that's the solicitor's business. And that's motel is a very, very... Actively full, and that's another. What was that, Roxanne? What kind of hotel? I'm um, Suzanne. Thank you very oh, much. Sorry, Suzanne. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> it happens. I'm sorry. Met, what, 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 what kind of hotel? Met's Motel. Met's Motel. Met's Motel. Met's Motel. It is working at full <laughs> occupancy, and um, that is another area that I'm very concerned about. I would like to see a work release program for that. There are many people there for for child support. They're not criminals. They they well. They haven't done anything dangerous. They haven't threatened anybody. They haven't killed anybody. But they get locked up because they haven't paid fifteen hundred dollars in child support over the last ten months. They get locked up for thirty days, sixty days, and so forth. I'd like to see them back working with an absolute contract that they will, we will take their money from them for child support. How do you give them a contract? Well, the judge did that. Well, well, you put an ankle bracelet.
bracelet on them and you track them and you know where they are. Now that that gets into where other monies, where monies come from. We get fees hey. from the from the well, court. Why not use those fees? Fees. fees. We have a, a passport account. The clerk of court has a, an account that it, she manages passports. I did the passports. Twenty five dollars. If any of you need a passport, go to the clerk of court's office. If you don't have to go downstairs, you can go downtown and stand in the post office line. You will pay twenty five dollars to get her office to to uh, process this passport. That twenty five dollars goes into a passport fund. That yeah, fund is kept at her discretion in her office. Right now, has thirty five thousand dollars. Thirty five thousand dollars. Recently, she bought a new leather sofa. We had a judge come to the court that was there for two weeks, and it needed a two, uh, the office needed to be updated a little bit. She bought a leather sofa. He left after his two weeks. She bought the leather sofa down to her office. She can spend that money on breakfast. She can have people come in for lunch to discuss whatever she wants to and take the money out of the passport account. That money is not fed into the county treasury as all money should be. As the law says that all monies collected by the clerk of court should go so to money. the county treasury. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, so <laughs> people that wait, wait, pay wait, for wait, passports wait. are paying for people's breakfasts? That's, Absolutely. That's and some, flowers. And some more money is not going in the hospital or you receive flowers from the clerk of court, taxpayer dollars pay for those flowers. I, no I just got two passports and it cost me $260. That's right. $135 a piece. Well, if you got them through the courthouse, and, and if you pay downtown, if you go to the passport office or the post office, they too are charging $25 to keep that office going. We as a, an, a, a, an official government agency can have a contract with the passport people to offer that service. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Susan, I agree with you. When someone does not pay their child support, they're locked up. What happens? They lose their job. They want to come back home and have no job. They lose their Ability, ability to, to make pay. a living, okay, because they have a criminal record. So if they can do day work, like you're saying, go to the original job they were at, because most of them work, from the standpoint, it would really help the system. It, it, it would Somebody make, shut that man up, he's being way too logical. It, it, too <laughs> sensible, really, true. You're absolutely right. It would, it would make a tremendous difference, and it would make a tremendous difference at the courthouse. Well, very quickly, I will hurry up. We have a new court system that's getting ready to go into effect where the Department of Social Services will take over the management of all the funds for child support. It's efficient. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to help the totality of the family court. Um, it's in the process. Even the current clerk is not aware of exactly what's going to happen. And see, the thing we forget are the kids. We have a lost generation of kids out there. Absolutely. You know, it's it's tragic. Suzanne, thank you for coming today. Thank you, and I'll be happy to. My card, I've passed them out. Um, my cell phone is on that card, and if you have any questions or if you have someone that would like to have more information about the clerk of court and what I would bring to that office, um, I'm very, very much sure I'll lay One last thing before I sit down, I'm going to move toward my chair so you'll know this is it. The courthouse, if you poll the people at the courthouse now, employees in the clerk of court's office, the solicitor's office, <coughs> the custodial staff to the circuit court judge. There are 100 people in that building, and I have no doubt that I would get 95 of those votes. That's how certain that I am that the people that work with the clerk of court today realize there needs to be a change in Lexington. I hope you'll agree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. commercial from Al Denton that he brought up just prior to Suzanne getting up and making the presentation. We'll go through that and then we're going to go back to our normal format of discussion. Uh, I'd like to hear some discussion about the ordinance that several of us went down to the county and we talked about that. Al, you want to go ahead with your, uh, your point? There was an article on CBS News that uh, France is putting out a new men's deodorant and it's called the Cheating Man's Deodorant. In other words, when you go home, if you've been with another young lady, probably some of her odor has got onto you, and you go close to your wife, she can smell it, and she'll know what you've been doing. Well, with this cheating man's deodorant, it smells like gasoline, smells like pine trees, it smells like anything except other women. 
For this ordinance they just had in Richmond County that they voted down, I believe, saying they, they were trying to pass an ordinance where if you had a cat, now that was a you had to keep it on your property. They come by my house, I'm looking at the TV, and all of a sudden, there's my cat. She's sitting out in the yard where she usually sits, in my yard. She's about 20 years old. Just sitting there. And they come by and take a film of her and use her on TV without my permission <laughs> to, promote, <laughs> to promote something that's the most foolish thing I ever heard of in my life. If you ever had a cat, you ever tried to keep him in your yard, you can't do it. But, but the ordinance that they're talking they about. They voted it down, I believe. Yes. But this is, <laughs> I'll tell you the thing, though, that, that I, I think I made. 
people mad last night, and I'm glad. Really? I don't understand. Um, the whole problem is, is that if they pass it, I said, I, I asked the group, I said, what are you going to do if they pass it? You know, crickets. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, that's the problem. Because the truth is, somebody says, well, we'll just vote them out. And I said, well, what are you going to do, vote somebody else in? And what are they going to do about it? How many times have you seen politicians actually repeal things? Well, that, whatever. That should be okay. the primary job. So they then, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You, I, and I, I stood up and I said, I'm, "Every everyone in this room is going to abide by it," and that's the problem. Is it, is it if they pass council, it, council, if, council. They, if they pass it, it doesn't matter if it's against God's law, if, it, if it's against natural law or not. We have been so indoctrinated into the believing that we're a nation of laws. Never mind what the laws are and if they're right or wrong. If they're passed and they're on the books, then you must follow them. That's right. And you, you don't have to create habit in not following it. Just don't follow them. Well, well, Hell no, we won't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Corey, Corey, I saw the book earlier about this, and she had an idea. Like 13 inch grass this year. <laughs> no. She had an idea about uh, maybe having an attorney or something to pursue this. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah, Corey, your idea. I'm going grass. Yeah. Corey, I would say, first of yeah. all, you need. Get a, get a get a as large a group as you can to go and speak to town to, to county council, but also perhaps you know, either get someone who would do it because they feel strongly about it and just do it broadest. Right. Uh, but an attorney who can who can basically <coughs> excuse me um, point out the property rights <coughs> laws, etc., and, and and have this violates most people's notion of. So the problem with and they that, can't even, they can't even, they can't even, they, they didn't pass a cap, but they want to regulate grass and they want to regulate That's outcomes. my point the only, was, what, don't they have anything better to do? <laughs> no. The only, the only problem with that is, is we have already conceded that we don't own our own property by allowing them to tax it and take it if we don't pay the oh, tax. Well, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. a concession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Bottom line is, we already have the laws on the book. We yeah. have the laws. Problem. Standpoint. That covers most of it. And most of the houses that are abandoned are people who have yeah. lost their houses through foreclosure or whatnot. Again, with the reason. Repair. Again, with the reason. Repair. These people don't use reason. I understand that. They, they, want to have, they want to enlarge our liberty by making Lexington County a better place to live by regulating what you can and can't do with your property. called socialism. I believe so. It's, it's <laughs> the, the antithesis of enlarging your liberty. Now hang on to that hot dog cart. So, so, Corey, you talk about crickets. Right. That kind of surprises me because you usually have a pretty active group down there. Well, no, I mean, there were a couple people who said, well, I can help. I just can't lead it, you know, lead the effort. It, 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 you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have the time to, to lead the effort. I'll help if I can, but it's, there, there's, there's a lot of people that want to sit around and complain, but when it really comes to sticking your neck out, nobody wants to do it. Well, if I remember, the hearing would be sometime in March is what I was the hearing will be whenever they come up with it and think that they can squeeze it in without us knowing about it. Yeah. What, they, what they said on video was uh, it was uh, they were planning on having it late February or sometime in early March. Yeah. Well, Ron, what's, what's, what's your perspective? Uh, I mean, I mean, I think Christmas idea about at least us we can go down there, if we get notified, we can be there. You'd be surprised what a large group of people can do to change votes. You would know that. I think. <laughs> I think with this ordinance, uh, what's going to happen is you're just going to lose your equal prote uh, protection rights under the law. Because what they're doing is they're they're targeting certain areas. They put a map online and they've got it all, you know, little green spots here and there of where they want to regulate. Put this ordinance into effect, and it doesn't encompass the whole county. There's an argument there that that's arbitrary and capricious enforcement of the law if they try something like that. I mean, there are all kinds of issues here, it seems to me, that they are setting themselves up for. But it's going to take somebody to elaborate that. One just said it much better than I can. What's that? Thank you for your input on this. Ron heard this when we were down there, and I think Corey heard this. It's one of the things they, they, they talk about. One, I heard the argument, and I had one council member get very mad at it. I won't mention his name. But they said, well, I just voted for this so that we could bring it up for public hearing. So why would you, and three people, three, I, I give them kudos, three of them said, no, we're not, we're not this is right, we vote no. So why would you vote yes just to bring it up for public hearing? I, I don't understand that argument. 
Well, has it been, has, has the person that brought it up been talked to by a group such as this and or other groups that feel strongly about was property Brad rights? Brad Matthews. Brad Matthews. I'm, 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 I'm leaving here and Everybody should call him. Email him. I, I called him and left him a message. I never got a return call, which he's not my representative. Invite him to come to this group. That's what started the whole problem is his constituents, 50 of them, called him complaining about people's property. No kidding. Well, uh, I, I think that one person calling their own representative has a lot more influence than a group of people going to a county council meeting or, or a group of people calling a particular council meeting that's not their representative. Because uh, I, I don't think I can ever remember somebody saying, wow, we have a big group of people there, I'm going to change my vote. But I have heard people say, yeah, I had a bunch of people in my district call me. We have enough people that we have enough in each district. That, I mean, and, and with county council, it only takes three or four calls, and they get worried. I asked and didn't get an answer. Why don't you try to make this ordinance for District 7 only? <laughs> yeah, they can't do that. Uh, I, I don't think there's enough to call them. Okay. <clears throat> These people live and work in the community. You see them out, go up to them and tell them. I mean, you know, don't be rude, don't be disrespectful, but make sure that they know. Make sure that they feel uncomfortable being out and about uh, around their constituency um, when their constituents, they don't want their property rights violated. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the other thing, too, is we, we complain about this, but I shook hands with the three who voted against it because I think they did the right thing. They should be rewarded. They were posturing. Well, maybe so. I, 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 mean, I it, it, that's what they come, they, they've got this game figured Sorry. out. That's the, that's the other thing. They, it's, all, it's, a rig, it's a rigged game. I mean, that's why you can only have public comment on second reading. It's because they can control and corral things the way they want to make it work. Well, so the, the things, only way to combat it is to make their lives really uncomfortable. One of the things I'll say uh, good about our city of Casey is that uh, there's the option for public comment on anything on the agenda. So you can sign up and speak on anything on the agenda. And I don't, totally. I don't, agree. Dave, is there any reason why the county can't do that? Yeah, yeah, because then people would talk to them. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, let me switch gears briefly. Uh, Bill Burbridge has been off of flight back here. Bill, how many comments have you had? He's talking about everybody working. Bill, how many comments have you had in your last newsletter? I haven't sent any letters that we need to comment on. But let me ask Phil Black and his book. You made a comment a little while ago about some children.
no tax on drugs. I'm sorry, drugs. Drugs on the street. But also groceries. And everybody who's consuming something pays a certain amount of taxes. Why are you going to pay some amount of taxes? Because the standpoint, somehow, some way, you have to have enough money to just run these on things the government set up for, and that's security. They're supposed to keep us secure. No, no, they're supposed to protect your liberty. So, but that, well, security is a much more general term. It can mean a whole lot of things that people stretch it to mean. Well, it means the fact you have another meal. I mean, security can mean passing ordinances that your grass can't beat you out because I need security in my financial investment in my home. That's not security. I'm telling you, I'm protect you from you. But well, that's your you. That's your responsibility first. That's on your own property. That's the only. No, that's your that's your responsibility. Period. Well, I'm going down to the board and go check on check all the illegals coming in. No, 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 no. You, you protecting your life is your responsibility first. You, you can't have enough border agents or police officers to keep you safe at all times. You are your own responsibility first. I have my concealed weapons permit. I understand what you're saying. I yeah. Yeah. But that was, too many people think that it doesn't work that way. Oh, well, I don't need to protect True myself. Story. Guy was in the store yesterday. He's from the um, meth area down in outside of Pekin. And um, he's had problems stealing and whatnot. I spent a few months back in the last year. Boy was out there. He said he saw the glow of the light up with his own, you know, his, his um, cigarette he was smoking. So he had butt shot. He said, I'm ready. And of course, that one really hurt him back right on. So he shot the glow. He said, right now, so he had a friend son who was really messed up in drugs. He said, before he told me, tell his dad, he said, you know, we're not going there with that particular house. That's called the bullet man. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you hear about this batch of meth that they, I don't know who made it, but people that smoke it lose all the muscle mass in their face. And a beautiful girl, within a week, she'll look hideous. Sounds like a problem that takes care of itself. Now, Mountain Dew didn't do that. <laughs> no, Mountain Dew, if you use the wrong cleaner, will do it. They call it apple pie now. <laughs> Dixie. Dixie. Play Dixie.